after. Follow the Father. Don't be afraid. The fullness of time. And that verse 4 caught my attention. What does fullness mean to you? That's a good question. Think about it. What does fullness mean to you? To me, fullness means you can't add no more. The bottle is full. And the Word of God says, I have never been taught this. I've been taught about a bunch of things. A lot of things I wasn't interested in. Because I wanted to know more about Jesus. I wanted to get closer to Jesus. Verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, I look at it like this. The Old Testament reached its end. The fullness, which could not be added anymore to the time, was over. It was over. It couldn't go forward until the birth of Jesus. And to me that's very important today. We're seeing rumors of wars. We're seeing famine. We're seeing earthquakes, fires. Alaska just had an earthquake. California fires. Lord, God bless the United States while we abort babies. Lord, bless the United States while we don't follow your word and says be fruitful and multiply. Lord, we want you to bless us, but Lord, we don't want to bless you. The time came when we had to have something that the law couldn't give. Remember this, Jesus says, I come not to change but to fulfill the law. Jesus fulfilled it and the fullness of time reached its point. The fullness of time has truly come. My heart is hurting, my heart is breaking because more people put more emphasis on themselves and what they want instead of putting their emphasis on the lost people that needs Jesus. A person that is lost is lost. And that person needs to hear the Word of God in love and in truth and reality. The Old Testament was now complete. That's the fullness now. Amen. Either it was full or it wasn't full. If the Bible says it was full, it must be full. It was time to shift gears into the church age. We have no choice, but let's go on. The Old Testament was now complete. <coughs> now was the time for the New Testament. For those who come to church to exercise whatever they want to do, they're missing out. We don't come to church to have fun. We come to church to praise Jesus. In turn, we have fun. Amen. But Jesus is the main reason. As far as I'm concerned, Jesus is the only reason. Amen. We need a change in our hearts. We need a change in our churches. I don't need a musician. I don't need a special, beautiful music. I need, I can use all that, but I need the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life. Because there are so many people that are hurting. They are hurting right now. They're hurting this time of the year. They don't need to know this and that. They need to know that there's someone who loves them and cares for them. Amen. <coughs> are y'all with me on that? Amen. Everything now was set in motion for the world desperately needed a Savior. The law couldn't save you. The blood of Jesus can. Amen. But let's get on. The fullness of time has come. The fullness of time. 
When I was a kid coming up, I didn't know what automatic transmission was, but I, I found out. I think they called it a fluid drive and we crashed it, I believe. But we had a stick, a standard. Amen. I drove one in the army. But now the automatic transmissions is just about taking over. But it's like putting a car or a truck, back then a truck was a truck, was used to work, not to parade around showing off. But if you was getting ready, let's say from here to back, here to Vicksburg, here to Sterlington, you put your vehicle in first gear, and you drive all the way, what do you think is going to happen? For those who don't know, it's going to burn up. Because the transmission was meant to go three speeds and overdrive was full of gear. Well, brothers and sisters, the Old Testament, let's say, was the first gear. And the time came to shift because if it wouldn't have shifted, it would have burned up. We wouldn't have salvation like we have now. We wouldn't have the grace of God and the mercy of God and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe this. If you want to be saved, if you want to be delivered, we have a holy, righteous God that will do it if we want to. We got to want to. But the fullness of time has come. It was time to shift. The perfect time in history that was appointed by God before the creation of this world has now come to an end. For God to send His Son. The coming of Christ was a fulfillment of the law. Remember, and I just said it, and it's very important to understand, Christ said that he did not come to change the law, but to fulfill the law. The law was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Amen. The law was fulfilled. The United States has a constitution. A lot of people want to change the constitution. But our forefathers had divine spiritual wisdom. It had to be ratified. I believe the three quarters of the, of the states. So someone in power couldn't just come in and say, we're going to change this and we're going to change that. It's the same thing when Jesus says, I fulfill the law. We can't change it. It is done. It is written in his blood. For what the law couldn't do, Christ did. Amen. The law covered sin with an animal sacrifice. Jesus erases sin through his blood. And that's very important. Amen. Satan will keep bringing it up to you, but when Satan brings it up to you, tell him, Satan, I am covered by the blood. <laughs> woo, you better, you, woo. We're children of the king. We don't have to. We really don't. The blood of Jesus not only forgives sin, but the blood of Jesus forgets with no remembrance. And that's very important. It really is. It really is. Everything now in history was ready. Everything pointed to the coming of the Son of God. It was ready. We had to shift. We had to change and enter into the presence of God. The presence of a holy, righteous God. Jesus has done did his part, now it's up to us. Are we going to believe and follow, or are we going to believe and make God do what we want him to do? I know I want to be close to Jesus. I don't want no hindrance. I don't want no hindrance. No more in the Old Testament could take place because of the fullness of time. Oh, there's been, there's the, domi there's the domination, there's other things that says, oh, we're not in the New Testament anymore, we're in the Old. 
I know one thing. I want to be in the new. I want to be in the new. The Son of Man at this point in history had to come and had to be born of woman, not of man and woman. <coughs> For those who don't believe in the virgin birth, what they're saying that Jesus was born with the sin nature. And if Jesus was born with the sin nature, I want to share something with you. In the Old Testament, when an animal was to be sacrificed, it had to be pure and perfect. It couldn't have a blemish. If Jesus had the sin nature, when he went to the cross, he would have been worthy to go to the cross. Because he would not have been the perfect lamb. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the virgin birth. Mm -hmm. They tell me, I don't know, I, I did go to the seminary, I did. That's because God told me to. They tell me there are some seminary professors that don't believe in the virgin birth. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they don't believe in the holy righteous Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he was a righteous, perfect Lamb of sacrifice. Amen. Now that's my take on it now, and I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. Now, first of all, I'm too old, and I'm too ignorant. Because I believe in what the Word of God says. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and she conceived. The sin nature is handed down by man, not women, by man. But today, well, let's get on with it. Everything was set in place for God to act. The time was now, and now it was. But have y'all ever thought about this? Mary conceived, and the Son of Man, the Son of God, was in Mary's womb for nine months. Have y'all ever thought of it? Mm -hmm. Jesus was born in natural ways. Now in Genesis, Adam was, cre was, cre was cre <coughs> created fully. <coughs> then a deep sleep came upon Adam, and God took a rib and created and made, not created, God created man and God made woman out of the rib of man. But I'm here to tell you, God uses natural ways for spiritual means. Mary carried the Son of God for nine months. I believe this. When the time came, the fullness of time came, God extended it nine months. The Son of Man, the, the, the Creator, the Bible says all creation was created by Jesus. Y'all need some Bible studies. Was created by Jesus. But yet the Creator of everything, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, according to John chapter 1, verse 1, the Creator of everything was in Mary's womb for nine months, and I believe it gave the world an opportunity to repent, but the world mostly did not repent, but that did not stop Jesus from coming. Mm -hmm. Jesus came. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Jesus sat, like I said, sat in the womb for nine months. I, I say, wow, on that. Today, what are the churches looking for? Not all churches, but today, what most churches are looking for? Signs and wonders, manifestations. We want to see this. We want to do. <coughs> but yet, God came in a natural being, just like you and I. Does that mean signs and wonders won't take place? Signs and wonders will take place. The greatest sign and wonder, if you want to know, is when somebody meets Jesus. Amen. How about healing? I'm, I'm, I'm a walking, uh, you know, I, I don't know why. It's not up to me to question God, it's up to me to follow God. Amen. I don't know why. I don't know why. But yet I am. 
and I'm sharing it. Oh yes, to me the greatest sign and wonder a person can have is when Jesus was born a woman. The Creator was born just like you and I were. Outside, His Father was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The fullness is when nothing more could be added. When nothing more could be added. God wants to fill your heart right now. God wants to touch you right now. God wants to touch you. God wants to touch you more than you want to be touched by God. Amen. God wants to reach down and hug you. For no other reason than He loves you. He paid the price to love you. He paid everything, like Brother Philip said earlier this morning. How can you repay a God who's given you everything? There's only one way. That is to worship and to praise Him in truth and in spirit. Yeah. Worship Him in truth and in spirit. Mm -hmm. My mother passed on at 59. My dad passed on at 62. I'm 77 yesterday. Mm -hmm. God's not finished with me. God's not finished with you. You might say, well, preacher, you just don't know. You just don't know. Well, you don't know me. <laughs> well, you think you do, but you don't know me. You really don't. I like to give away things. That's my problem. I give away things. It don't bother me a bit. It don't belong to me anyway. <laughs> but I reached a point where I'm going to have to quit giving and start doing it. But I'm still going to give because I love giving. I love it. I love to see people. Eyes light up. Mm -hmm. Most people try to take from from other people. Mm -hmm. And that hurts me. People who claim to be baptized of the Holy Ghost. Well, they need to get baptized again. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not joking. When you baptize in the Holy Ghost, you got the fullness of Christ and you, you ain't going to want to take, you're going to want to give. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow my chain of thought? Amen. 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 The fullness is when nothing more can be added. I'm so thankful. You know, I'm thankful. I got something, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha. I got something they don't have. Mighty men of God. But I got something they don't have. I got, I got mercy, I got grace, and I got forgiveness. Amen. You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm going to go ahead and share it with you right now. I'm looking forward to going and being with Jesus. Amen. But while I'm here, i got work to do. And the work that God has laid on my heart is bringing as many people into the kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Ghost. Don't you think that should be all of our desires? Don't you think we should care? I care. I care. But I've got something they don't have. Mercy, grace, and forgiveness. They long for the day that me and you are living in. The fullness of time. We need to leave here praising the Lord. We need to live here, leave here worshiping Jesus. Amen. You might
might say, well, preacher, I, 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 I'm not worthy. Well, welcome to the crowd. I'm not worthy either. There's nobody worthy. Anytime anyone is, listen now, anytime anyone thinks he or she is worthy, that proves their unworthiness. Amen. Because through faith, through faith, it's Christ Jesus that makes us worthy. Amen. Through faith, it's the blood of the Lamb of God that makes us worthy. Amen. Amen. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. amen. There's some things I just don't understand. Some things I just don't understand. Now as believers, we can have the fullness of Christ in our lives. The Holy Ghost will fill us. This is very important. The Holy Ghost will fill us. The Holy Ghost will lead us. The Holy Ghost will prepare us. The Holy Ghost will provide for us as we need. As we need. Whatever we need, put your faith in Jesus and He's going to do it. Amen. Put your faith in Jesus. Amen. With the fullness of Christ, our spiritual lives have just begun. That is, it's just started. You know what? God don't really care how old you are. He don't care how old you are. You can be 80 years old. And I don't know what somebody's going to say. Well, Moses was 80 when he started. Okay, we agree with that. But you can be 80 years old and meet Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your life has just started. You can be saved for 50 years. And I believe that's a personal relationship. But if you got out of the umbrella of Christ, you can come back. And your life is just starting. Amen. 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 Well, I just want to say this. The fullness of time came. Jesus was born. We're living, I believe, in the church age. Now, how long this church age is going to last, I can't answer. I don't know. I think it's close to ending. I think it's close to ending. Amen? So we just going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> so we're going to have an invitation. If you just want to pray, whatever, whatever, whatever. Heavenly Father, we thank you now. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen.